Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to take and show you a little something that you can do to add a little decorative flair to maybe some of your scroll work or to an artistic piece that you're working with by using the horn of your anvil. Now usually I suggest that you do not use the tip of your horn for anything really for the most part because you see a lot of horns that are really badly damaged on old anvils. They got like a crow beak going on or they've been cut off. Um, by some stupid manner. I've seen everything from hacksaw marks cutting them mostly in two to torch cuts um, and just, just flat out damage from hammer blows. So I try not to use the tip of the horn of my anvil for a whole lot of things, but in this case, it's going to be a very uh, handy item to take and use. Now, if you don't have a horn on the tip of your anvil, that is okay. You don't have to have a horn in order to do this technique. Uh, you can take and use uh, just a fuller, if you will, in your hardy hole of your anvil or some other type of means. You could even use maybe like a ball peen hammer from on top of the piece. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how this looks real quick. We've got a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat stock that is six mil by 25 mil flat stock. It's getting heated up here. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to show you what I mean. So we're going to start and we are going to hammer at the back. and just draw out a lug of material and we're just going to just work that straight out flatten this piece up again and I'm going to stick it back in the fire now consequently this is a very nice way as well if you have the right shaped horn to set yourself up for a scarf weld on like a T-joint if you're doing uh, a, like a T-weld and forge welding. But hopefully you guys can see the crispness of that and how that kind of turned out so far. We're going to go ahead and heat it up again and we're going to add one more little detail there. So I've got the coke forge. I got coke running today so the blower's on here so it's a little louder. Sorry about that. but. Uh, hopefully you guys will be able to bear with me and you can hear my voice just fine. Comment down in the comment section if that is so and that you're finding this valuable so far. So we'll get this good and hot here. It's almost there. Let this heat just a little bit more. And uh, while that heats up, I'm going to thank everyone for being here today. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you might want to do so and you want to hit that jingle bell for notifications uh, so, you, so you can find out every time I upload. I do upload, however, seven days a week, every week, 365. So if that's not something you're into, maybe don't hit the jingly bell uh, for notifications. All right, we're going to come out, and now we're going to go walk all the way around the anvil, and we're going to hit it on the other side the same way, about the same distance. You'll have to forgive me, I was hammering a little crooked there. Hammering with, kind of crossing over myself because of the camera being right in the way. Yeah, I'll have to do that again anyhow. So let me go ahead and brush this up. I didn't get quite as deep of a groove on that one, but I can come back and clean that up a little bit later. But now you're getting a little bit of a wavy texture. Now this could be a very neat, reoccurring theme. Uh, a lot of blacksmithing and ornamental blacksmithing comes down to reoccurring elements. So you create one element, then you just repeat that, wash, rinse, repeat that same element multiple times in the same piece, okay? So, so you just keep repeating that. So say gate work, uh, railings, things like that. Those you figure out one decorative element and then you connect all the decorative elements, usually by a handrail or something like that. And then that's what makes up the whole entire railing or the piece. You might be like, well, it's a lot more complex than that, but it's really not. Scroll work, branching scroll work, it's all the same thing. You figure out what type of scroll you're putting in a specific negative space. 
you put that there and then you just make it a friend and then a copy and then a copy and then a copy and then a copy and then that makes this really ornate scroll work so all right so now back over to the horn doing about the same spacing we're advancing it forward and same place on the horn and the The better you can hold this in one spot, the better off you'll be. Now it kind of jumped around a bit on me here, but that's okay. Let me clean that up. But now we're getting this reoccurring pattern. Now this may not be your cup of tea, this type of pattern work. Now you can use this in a lot of different ways. You could do a ball peen texture pattern like that. You could take a, a ball peen, hammer it down in one spot, move it over a little bit, hammer it down another, so on and so forth, so on and so forth, right off and up a piece. You could use chisel lines, you could use punch marks. Again, it's creating a reoccurring theme. And when you add this to something, say you're making a basket, uh, making kind of a hoop and like a little basket stand to hold a flower pot. You could just do a basic band with a couple rivets, or you could add some chisel lines or some decorative element like this forging here, then put in a hoop, couple of rivets, and it just adds that much more visual interest and value to the piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this hot one last time here. I'm gonna go back over all my joints. And you don't have to do this to where it's just on a flat like this. You could draw this out into a taper first, like a really long taper, and then do it all the way up the taper, but maybe in reducing cross section so you know it's not as wide of a flare. And uh, you could get a lot of really cool results that way. I'm gonna finish drawing out that last little nub there. Go to the first nub. Flip all the way around. That other nub there. That's looking good. Straighten it out without exactly hitting my piece. Take my little bend out of it. And there we are. Hopefully you guys can see that reoccurring theme. Here, let me pull off this blower here real quick. That way I don't have to yell so much. Woo, hopefully that makes that a little bit better. But now you guys can see that reoccurring theme. What is neat about this is you're creating negative spaces. So you're creating transition of line. You're creating this uh, different depths and textures. And you're also creating in the same instance you're creating these negative space. You're creating negative spaces, which means you're creating positive spaces for a particular design. So let's say you don't like the bulged out looks of those. Well, that's perfectly all right, because now that you have this curvature here, now that you have this little curvature going on, you can grind or cut off those little lobes there. You can take these little lobes off maybe even forge them back into the piece. I would suggest grinding or cutting them off. And now you have these dimples, this reoccurring pattern on a relatively straight bar, uh, a straight piece of bar stock here. And that really adds a lot of visual interest to what would have otherwise just been a flat bar element. Um, so hopefully this has inspired you to do something in your own shop today. Think about where you could use this pattern at, uh, you know, I am hoping with this little video series, everybody is enjoying it and that I am bringing you some sort of true value with showing you some different artistic techniques that you can apply to your own work. If I have provided you any value, remember to hit that like button and share this video around with your friends. 
And if you would like to uh, support what Jessica and I do here at Christ Center Ironworks, providing even more valuable content like this, uh, consider checking out our website over at blacksmithpdfs.com. Or another great way of supporting this channel is just sharing these videos around. So that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, remember that like button. And as always, God bless you. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.